Hi guys, uh, today's video is on the calculation of uh, compass error using the azimuth method and we'll have uh, a star as the celestial body and uh, this is example 2 in the series um, I have previously discussed a star and the link to that video is in the description section below there are a number of videos on celestial navigation in the description section below so you should watch all those videos and practice all the questions to get a good understanding of this topic in today's question, uh, the date is October 27th, 2004 and the dead reckoning position is uh, 21 degree 54 minutes north, 15 degrees 27 minutes west. The star is Russell Hegg and it was observed to bear 265 degrees compass. So the compass bearing of the star was 265 degrees. Uh, the chronometer showed the time 645.16 the error of the chronometer was 1 minute 47 seconds slow the ship's time or the zone time was uh, 1 hour behind gmt so minus 1 hour or from gmt and uh, the zone time or the ship's time on the ship was approximately 1747 what you have to find is the deviation of the compass if the variation was 8 degrees west so before we start with the solving of the question we have to make sure that we solve the ambiguity that is there regarding the chronometer time so let's learn how to solve the ambiguity of the chronometer time and uh, now when the time given to you is 6 45 16 you write down the chronometer time as given to you in the question and uh, then you write down the other possibility of this time so 6 45 16 could be 6 45 16 in the morning or just add 12 hours to the time given to you and it could be 18 hours 45 minutes 16 seconds as well so it could be 6 in the morning or 6 in the evening but we'll find out which is the correct time based on the hint given to us in the question uh, the next thing we do is we apply the chronometer error if the error is slow we add the error alright so if the error is fast we subtract it but if the error is slow we add the error so we add the same error in both the both the cases here so the error is 1 minute 47 seconds slow so the error once you add to the chronometer time you get your GMT time and again there are two possibilities 6.47.03 or 18.47.03 the zone given to you is that you are one hour behind GMT alright so again you are in west longitude 15 degrees 27 minutes west you are in 15 15 degrees 27 west longitude when you are in west longitude you are running behind GMT GMT is ahead of you so when it is given to you that you are one hour behind GMT you will subtract one hour from the GMT time and you will get your zone time or ships time some books call it zone time some books call it ships time uh, depends on which book you are studying from both the things are same so once you subtract the zone correction from the GMT, you get your zone time or your ship's time. Now in one case, your zone time is 5.47.03 and in the other case, your zone time is 17.47.03. So how do I know which is the correct zone time? Look at the hint given to you in the question. The hint says that it is 17.47 on your ship and it is 27th of October on your ship. It's given to you in the question. So immediately you know that the first case is not for you. Your ship, the time is 27th of October. The date is 27th of October and the time is 1747.03. So therefore, the GMT, because you are only one hour behind, is also 27th of October, 1847.03. So remember, once you figure out the GMT, use the GMT time many students in a rush what they do is they use the zone time to solve the question and then it is incorrect all right so make sure you highlight the gmt time you write it separately once you know the correct gmt time once you get your gmt date and time all you have to do is go into the nautical almanac and find out the relevant values so the because this is a star in question we'll find out the gha aries for 1800 hours then we'll go into the increment section, find out the increment for 47 minutes, 03 seconds. Increments are always added. Once you add the increment, you will get the GHA corrected for 18 hours, 47 minutes, 03 seconds. This is the GHA Aries corrected. 
then you can also find out the SHA star. I'll show you where to find the SHA star and also you will be able to find out the declination of the star Russell Haig. All right, so let's go into the nautical almanac. So you can see here, uh, I have the nautical almanac open in front of me and uh, we have 27th of October here. Sorry for that. Uh, 27th of October 2004 is here. The stars are here in the column here. You have the SHA and the declination here. Your star is Russell Haig. They are all listed alphabetically. So you will find Russell Haig right here. So your SHA is 96 degrees 13 minutes and your declination is 12 degrees 33.4 minutes north. So you can find out the SHA and the declination straight off. What you also have to find out is the GHA Aries. So you have to find it out for 27th of October and your time is 18 hours. So you go into 18 hours, extreme left hand corner, 1800 hours. The GHA Aries is 306.25.8. Now this is for 1800 hours. To this you have to add the increment for 47 minutes and 03 seconds. So what you do is you will go into the increments page for 47 minutes 03 seconds. So here you have the increments page for 47 minutes. You will use the Aries column. Remember that use the Aries column not the Sun column. So 47 minutes and 03 seconds is here. So 47 minutes is on the horizontal column. Seconds are in the vertical column. Your increment is 1147.7. So what I did was I showed you the values uh, in uh, one of uh, once we have come into the almanac I wanted to show you all the values together so that we don't go backwards and forwards from the calculation so you know where we got the values from. So once we got the increment we added the increment to the GHA we got GHA Aries corrected as 318 degrees 13.5 to this we add the SHA star. Now remember increment and SHA is always added. Once you add the SHA, we have 318 plus 96. All right, so that will give you, if you know, 6 plus 8, 14 plus 1, 11, uh, and we have 414 degrees 26.5 right you have 414 degrees 26.5 as the GHA star but GHA star or GHA cannot be more than 360 so as soon as you see that the value is more than 360 subtract it from 360 all right anytime you see the value of GHA or LHA crossing 360 you will subtract it from 360 so once you subtract 414 26.5 from 360 what you get is 54 degrees 26.5 as a GHA star and that's the GHA we will use. Then we have the west longitude. Whenever you have west longitude, you will subtract it from the GHA because the rule of thumb is longitude west, GHA is the best. That means GHA will be more than LHA. If longitude was east, GHA would be least. That would mean GHA is less than LHA if it's east longitude. But because this is west longitude, your GHA will be best longitude west. So GHA will be more than LHA. So you will subtract it from the longitude and you get your LHA. So this is your LHA star. All right. So if you're wondering how I subtracted 54 degrees 26.5 minus 15 degrees 27 minutes, you can either put it in the calculator or because you see the minutes are lesser above than below, you can just add 60 from here. Every degree is 60 minutes. You can add 60 from here and reduce one degree from here making it 53 but these days you have scientific calculators so you can simply put in the values then once i've got my lhs star as 38 degrees 59.5 i have named it west now why have i named it west because the rule of thumb is when the lh is 0 to 180 your lh is named west if it is more than 180 degrees to 360 degrees your lh is named east so therefore, because your LHA is between 0 to 180, your LHA has been named West. Then I also showed you where to find the declination from, declination of the star Russell Haig next to the SHA of the star Russell Haig and I have written down the declination. Because stars are so far from us, we normally don't apply a declination correction to the star's declination. We normally do that to the sun's declination only. 
all right so once you've got all these values it's only a matter of finding out the components of a b and c so to find the component of a a is equal to tan lat divided by tan lha simply put in the values of the latitude and lha here ignore any negative sign if you get any ignore the negative signs all right simply put in the positive value so here i have put in 0.50 I have stuck to two decimal places. You can go more if you want to. In the exam, if you have time, go to more decimal places. The more the decimal places, the more accurate it becomes. I have stuck to two decimal places. So although you ignore the negative sign, you still have to name the A component. So A component, I have named it as South. Why? Because A component is named opposite to latitude. Always named opposite to latitude. Unless your LHA is between 90 and 270. So that would mean if your LHA is between 90 and 270, you would name it same as latitude. Now your LHA is 38 degrees 59.5. That is not between 90 and 270 and that's why you will name it opposite to your latitude. Your latitude was north. So you can see the latitude given to you in the question is 21 degree 54 minutes north. Therefore, you will name it south. Now with B, B is found by dividing tan declination by sine of LHA. Put in the value of declination and LHA. Again, ignore the negative sign if you get any. Only put the positive value. But name your B. In this case, I have named B north. Why? Because B is named same as declination. Your declination is north. You will name B north as well. Then once you've got your A and B, write down the values with the signs south and north. The rule is if they are same names, if both are south or both are north, you will add them. If one is south and the other is north, you will subtract them. So in this case, one is south, the other is north, you will subtract the smaller value from the bigger value. Retain the name of the larger value. So here your A is larger, A is south, so you will name C as south as well. Once you subtract the two values, you get 0 0.15 as C. Then find out tan of azimuth, which is equal to 1 divided by C times cos of latitude. Put in the value of C and cos of latitude. Find out the denominator first and then divide 1 by it. Do not write in your calculator 1 divided by C times cos lat. You will get the wrong answer. Alright. So put in the denominator first. Solve the denominator first. What you should be getting is tan of azimuth equals 7.18494. I have gone up to 5 decimal places here. Take tan to the other side. This becomes tan inverse. Tan inverse of the value will give you 82 degrees of azimuth. Now, once you get the azimuth, name the azimuth. So you will name it in this case, south and west. Why is that? West comes from LHA. Remember, you named your LHA previously. We named our LHA west because it was between 0 to 180. So I will name it west. The south comes from the name of C. Name of C. So your C above was named south. All right. Here, the C was named south, right? That's why you will name azimuth south 82 degree west. Now what is south 82 degrees west? South 82 degrees west is nothing but if this is south which is 180 degrees and this is west which is 270 degrees. Somewhere here is your south 82 degrees west. So you have gone 82 degrees from south towards west. So how can you find out the value? 82 plus 180 would be 262 degrees. So your true bearing becomes 262 degrees, which is the one written here. The compass bearing given in the question, it is given in the question, given to you as 265 degrees. The difference between the true and compass gives you the compass error. Compass best, error west. That means if compass is more than true, error is west. If compass is least, error is east. Here compass is more than true, so your compass error will be 3 degrees west. Then you have your variation again given to you in the question. A combination of variation and deviation, deviation is your compass error. Now if your variation is 8 degrees west, but compass error is 3 degrees west, your deviation will be 5 degrees east. Because a difference of variation and deviation in this case will give you the compass error. Because variation is 8 degrees west, 8 degrees west minus 5 degrees east is compass error. And because variation is the larger value, compass error will be west. Alternatively, how can you find out the answer? You can find out the answer like this. This is conceptual. Alright, so if this is say 270. So this is 262 
I'll erase the other part so that you guys don't get confused on what is going on here. So you should conceptually understand how to find the compass error as well because in the exam, sometimes in the oral exam, you may be asked how to find it out. So let this be 265 degrees and this is compass, right? And let this be 262 degrees, which is your true bearing. Now compass is lying on the west of true. Compass is lying on the west of true. It is not lying towards the east. It's lying towards the west. So your compass error becomes 3 degrees west. Now if I use another pen here, another color, your your variation is 8 degrees west variation is the angle between true and magnetic bearing so that means your variation is lying somewhere west of the true by 8 degrees so about 270 degrees so it will be here exactly 270 degrees is your magnetic bearing now from true to magnetic is your variation which is 8 degrees west All right I'll use the other pen to show you deviation. So what is deviation? Deviation is nothing but difference between magnetic and compass. So you have to see where is your compass lying with respect to the magnetic bearing. So it is lying east of the magnetic. By how much value? 5 degrees east. And this is your deviation. So if you can remember it like that, if you can remember it conceptually, it will always help you in the exam, no matter where you are, whether it's in the written or oral examination. So let me know what you thought about this video. If you have any questions, any doubts, any comments, feel free to write in the comment section. Thanks guys and I'll see you soon with my...